Hello and welcome to In the Light, Growing Your Soul with me, Anna Isabel. I'm an analytical hypnotherapist as well as a psychological astrologer. And I have a very special edition of In the Light, Growing Your Soul today because I am joined by Celine O'Donovan and a wonderful audience and amongst them a volunteer who is going to be working with me and with Celine to help her with a, a particular um, problem that she's been, let's just say, um, it's been harassing her <laughs> for some time. <laughs> and uh, more on that in a minute. So to begin with, I'd like to introduce Celine O'Donovan, who is the author of, well, Gifts from the Devastation. And I think that many of you may have already seen her when she was last on the program. And it's all about what she learned through having cancer. So welcome, Celine. Hi, Anna, thank you. It's so lovely to be back. <laughs> Feels like a long it, time ago, but you're lovely to it be back. It does like a long time ago, but it was this year, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, yeah, that's yes. time, that's time. <laughs> One of the things that I feel, having read your book, is that you're on a real healing journey and it's it's about healing yourself. And now you're you're taking everything you've learned to bring to others. So tell us a little bit where you are with this now. Okay, well, yeah, it's probably five or six months, I assume, since I was on with you. Um, and it's been very sort of organic. I think, as I said to you um, and anyone who has been through something like cancer or any major crisis will know it just your whole world falls apart so I had to go through the, the the falling apart part of it and that's where the writing came in for me because it was really important to sort of to um to I suppose go through that and yeah really process everything that was happening so as a result of the book coming out which was back in March April so it was probably around that time I was on with you I'd already been on a little bit of a, I suppose, a holistic journey all my life. I've always dabbled a little bit in that sort of mind, body, spirit world, but I had struggled to, I suppose, put it into practice in my own life. So I think for me, after many, many wake up calls before cancer, cancer was the one that finally, as someone says, the four by four over the back of my head. So it felt like a lot of these pieces were starting to come into, to, to come together. So since then, I've been, um, I went back training as a Reiki master, which I have just finished because for me, as well as the writing has been a big part of my journey, creativity has been a big part of it, healing. So I found that that has been, I've started to work with clients one-on-one -on -one, and it has taken the form of a Reiki practice that has evolved. I've been doing it both distance and just because of our circumstances and in person recently. And I've started to really see the impact even of doing the distance work. It's very energetic. And then aligned with that, what has started to come through is a very sort of intuitive way of working with the client. So I find when I work with them through Reiki, I get a very strong sense of what is going on and maybe some guidance for them. And then we sort of work with that and my big passion is to help others find in themselves what I'm still in the process of finding in myself. I don't claim to have all the answers, but it's really a journey of self-empowerment. And that is a passion of mine to help anyone else find that within themselves because it's in all of us. It's in every single one of us. And this is the journey. And sometimes we do get very, very challenging challenging really challenging wake up calls but my belief is the lower you fall the higher you you rise afterwards you know and and sometimes that has to happen because it's what happened to me I had many falls before cancer but um so yeah that's my passion now to really share my story I don't claim to have anyone's answers but I think through that sort of sense of community and working with each other I'm learning as much as others are for me so it's a it's the new way of I think it's a new earth a new way we're going to be in the future a new way of community can you briefly describe what the pressures were the stresses were that you feel led to you becoming ill 
Oh, okay. How long have you got? <laughs> I know. Uh, right. No, no. Yeah, I, I don't mean it. But I, I suppose it very. I can. I can describe that. Um, I suppose for many years, I would say I. I. I didn't fully understand it, but I wasn't living as my authentic self. I didn't even know what that meant or what my authentic self was. So I call it a journey of remembering. I wrote an article about it recently. My firm belief is that we're all born, we come in, we know exactly who we are, where we came from, we know our powers, we know our gifts, and then we come into a world of conditioning and just life, you know, families, education, systems, and, and bit by bit, parts of us start to, I suppose, um, maybe get hidden. We, I, I describe it as like all these layers start coming upon us. So ultimately I found throughout my life I wasn't expressing myself I didn't really know myself I felt very disconnected from any sense of um, I suppose uh, who I was so I suppressed a lot emotionally I think that's a huge thing for many women I I learned how to get along. I, I felt a sense of responsibility for others within my family of keeping people happy. I was a little bit of a people pleaser. I had no boundaries in my life. There was a huge imbalance in terms of giving and receiving. And to this day, I find it very difficult to receive. I was just working with another healer. I'm doing some work with together, but also um, on myself. And that came up as a huge thing still, this issue around receiving. Um, so that's something, an ongoing um, work for me. And it's no accident then that it manifested in the breast because, you know, the sense of self-nurturing and self-care. Um, also, I had very little, I didn't express myself creatively. I've really come to see how important it is for every single one of us. And if you mentioned the word creativity, I would have said anyone is creative but me. I'm not an artist, I'm not anything. And um, everybody, if you think of it, we come from creative energy, whatever you believe that to be. Just look at nature, you know, in some form. So we are of that substance. So we have to be creating like it, you know, it just, it, you know, we die. I was dying inside. Um, as a result of that, I kept pushing and pushing and pushing in my life because I believed I'm obviously not doing enough. There's something wrong. I'm not feeling fulfilled. I feel very empty. I'm feeling burnt out. OK, I'll work harder. I have a car accident. OK, I'll work harder. And I, I found it, I have to say, quite difficult to connect emotionally with people because I suppose just maybe as a child, I was very sensitive. I picked up a lot and I learned to just suppress that because it wasn't, what's the word, it wasn't seen or accepted within the family I grew up in. And I don't think I'm unique in that. I think it's how we've all, I've no blame towards my parents. It's how we're all brought up. So um it, it's it's a huge passion of mine as well to help others sort of find that emotional um expression because it's been a big journey of mine to release a lot of old I'm, I'm a big that's why I do the Reiki work as well with people I think we have to get into the body we have to get back in I was outside of my body really become embodied into who we are and then we can start expressing and then we can really start um to feel safe again in our lives you know there's a big job there as well of feeling safe so yeah it's it's it's, um, it's interesting because you're talking about feeling safe and mm -hmm. listening to you I think this is a fairly archetypal story for most human beings and what it really is about is the fact that we get into survival mode and that each culture says this is what you have to do in order to survive in the world and and survive then equals thrive and we can't tell the difference but actually we're operating on survival mode and this is how we get on treadmills mm -hmm. and how we suppress feelings and we're not listening to our bodies we're not listening to our hearts and then we get into disease mm -hmm. um which is it's a, it's really very much a, a block of energy so i guess at this point it would be good to introduce mel and perhaps mel you can unmute yourself um, because Mel, I talked about something that's been harassing you and that something is in fact cancer. So tell us about your experience and also can you relate to anything that Celine was describing? Wow, can I relate to kind of most of it? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, my experience as well in breast cancer, uh, left side, um, 
diagnosed about four years ago. Um, had an operation, um, thought everything was going okay. And then a couple of years ago, sort of, you know, started to get aches and pains. Um, and it just transpired that it had spread to the bone um, and a little bit in the liver. So um, that's where I'm at with my health at the moment. Uh, went through chemo, hence the lovely short haircut. Um, and um, now just on chemo tablets. Um, so yeah, it's been quite a journey health wise and listening to your story there, Celine, you know, there's so much I can identify with sort of growing up being the, the people pleaser, as you describe it, sort of giving a lot and in a family where perhaps emotions are a little bit suppressed, it's kind of get on with it and, you know, mm -hmm. why are you crying? Just, you know, and I was the eldest of four as well. So there was that sense of responsibility to my younger siblings, uh, quite a religious upbringing. Um, uh, so there was a lot of sort of... Uh, um, hellfire and damnation type of thing, really. Okay. Um, so feeling that, you know, you had to be a good girl, you had to do everything right. Um, and yeah, then growing up feeling that I couldn't really have that free expression and that sort of creativity was yeah. very stifled, really, in terms of sort of what, what is it to be creative? It's yeah. not about being yourself or, you know, uh, that yeah. free expression. So, um, yeah, throughout a lot of my adult life, trying to find my balance, really, where do I fit in or you know, who am I through all of this? Um, and can I ask you if prior to the diagnosis, if you were to look back and say, OK, how did I feel then? Like, what was my life like? How would you describe what your life was like before that? Um, it was very there was it was very full there was a lot going on um it was like i filled it with a lot of stuff but then it was quite chaotic and in terms of my romantic relationships that was it was very chaotic as well i never found security in any of 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 those relationships either um yeah it, it was i i i i've just lost in life really mm -hmm. <laughs> is the best way to put it um mm -hmm. in the out there i can imagine like i was yeah exactly the same it was you know i'll find the answers and doesn't the when you think of it now i can see how it's sort of designed nearly that way to keep us out there you know rather than in here and mm -hmm. really you know and i don't say it in a very it, it sounds very simplistic you know the answers are inside but it is, but it's a process, you know, and I think sometimes I'm still in that process. So I sort of feel even listening to you talking here, I mean, that's such a huge thing to be doing because so many people aren't, you know, and I don't, it's it's not anyone's fault, but I've seen so many people go back into the system and I almost did, only I was stopped because I had huge fatigue, huge fatigue. I literally was so programmed, it was, back on the wheel again, back on the hamster wheel, as Anna said. And literally every time I tried, I was taken out. So, I mean, I haven't gone back. And I think that's a fantastic thing that you're not, you know, I know where you are now and it's obviously hugely challenging, but you sound to me very much, you're starting into, you know, there's a lot of self-awareness there. Mm. And um, there's obviously a, a process happening within you that, you know, if you were to describe over the last year or two, how has that shifted for you internally or? Is... Yeah, um, well, I, I then became a mother about nine years ago. So that sort of started to change okay. a lot of things for me. Um, and then sort of a couple of years into sort of being a mother, that's sort of, you know, then things started to change in, in my body. I think perhaps I started to question my own upbringing as uh, perhaps we do when, when we become a parent. Um, and so there was a lot of, and then uh, the relationship I was in wasn't quite right either. So there was a lot of questioning about that and what was going on for me. So I know how I had this internal dialogue about my life as a whole, you know, I love the nurturing part of being a mother, but then there was a questioning of sort of my my own past and my, my present moment with a, uh, a, a guy that wasn't 
quite right for me. So there was there was a lot of push and pull. Um, so I'd started that journey and then I got this diagnosis and, you know, uh, <laughs> it was, mm -hmm. yeah. So there was already starting this questioning and suddenly with the diagnosis, my sister got diagnosed a couple of years prior, prior to myself as well. So that was a kind of an interesting sort of, thing that you know there was this there was just mm. a lot going on <laughs> mm, mm. it sounds as though you're still very much in in that healing physical healing um mode you you still have a lot a bit of a way to go because you're still having the tablets and so you're still having chemotherapy celine is there anything that you can suggest that mel could do that will help to support her uh, through this through the physical yeah I mean what I would thinking back to I can remember when I was going through I had chemotherapy then surgery and then radiotherapy and I can imagine as well I mean it took a huge amount out of me I mean most days I could just lie on the couch and I don't know if I had said this before and it might sound strange to a lot of people but I felt relief with the diagnosis as weird as that sounds it took me out of what I could no longer function in and this is how it had to what had to happen um a key thing for me from the very beginning and I, I don't know if you've done this yourself is was really around the support because I had been very much uh, oh I'll do this everything on my own so I did reach out. Have you, you know, looked at sort of counselling or support groups? I yes, imagine I, from the way you're nodding your head. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I'm sort of I, I work as a psychotherapist myself. So okay. I've kind of like tapped into sort of other things yeah. sort of in the background. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, yeah. In terms of support. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And would you like do you actually go for like, say, nice treatments or things like I know where I was I was going through a lot of, I did a lot of reflexology a lot of things where I didn't really allow that sort of nurturing of myself you know I really got into that and I found it so good to allow you know have you you know any sort of those sort of treatments that you yeah yeah you do yeah, as well absolutely the body uh, yeah uh, we have got a, have got a good uh, Macmillan sort of center here as well that's uh, that offers a lot of those things so that's really useful Okay, really, really good. And in terms of food and everything, do you look at a lot of, you know, um, in terms of sort of just how your diet or, you know, have you been changed I, it at all or? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, in the, I try and be healthy. There's other times where just, you know. Oh, just, just go <laughs> with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, that's, yeah, yeah. And I, I think the thing is to allow, I found just to give yourself permission, isn't it, to really just whatever you need in any given moment whether it's to lie in bed all day uh, whatever it is it's the most important thing because we haven't been doing that and you know and I never I, fe I felt guilty if I did that so I mean it's a really yes. important part isn't it um yeah yeah and I think as well it's difficult to lie because then I don't like to show weakness so to speak especially mm. in front of my daughter so there's that that feeling of just wanting to just you know uh get up and even if I'm feeling dreadful I'm okay I'm okay you know and just be doing things so that she can see that I'm okay um mm. which is hard how, but, how old is she now, now nine nine is, she is nine so I, I was thinking about that because on the one hand you don't want to make her feel afraid so you you don't want her to feel like mummy is so ill I might lose her. Yes. But on fine. the other hand, you also need to model um, something that is some vulnerability um, because she's going to have moments in her life and where she feels vulnerable. And what is it that we, we can do to help ourselves when we're vulnerable? So as much as you don't want to frighten her, what you also have here it's a strange word to, to use, but it is a, a very good opportunity to show her how to take care of herself by not suppressing, by not ignoring, by not, you know, so I would say you don't want to, to say to her, well, I can't cook your breakfast this morning. Um, I don't think you want to say that. but. And you don't want to make it look like 
you're, you know, <laughs> you're at death's door, so to speak, um, while you're doing her breakfast. But you might put on a brave face, do it and say, well, you know, when I'm finished with here and after I've dropped you off to school, I think I'm going to have a little rest um, because I'm not, I'm not feeling at my best today. So you're keeping it very light and very gentle, but you're at the same time showing her that you're listening to your body and that you, you're going to attend to it. Because I think to a certain extent, there's a bonus to this. And the bonus is that you're showing her that you're, there is a degree of control that you're able to take. And that could actually end up be, being more reassuring to her than if you try to hide it completely. Because you know what? Children always know what's going on, but they never know what's going on. So in other words, they pick up that things aren't right, but they can draw all the wrong conclusions mm -hmm. and end up. And so it can be very counterproductive to hide everything completely. So I would suggest that you, you, you just say, yep, yeah, not feeling too good at the moment. Here's what I'm going to do about it. And you know, be light about it, but at the same time, not hide it completely so that she feels like, okay, what I'm sensing is happening to mummy is not my imagination right. as well. Right. That's the other thing is that very often children sense things and then they're told that they're wrong. Right. And so what we're doing with, when we do that is we want to, we're wanting to protect them, but actually what we're teaching them is to not trust their feelings, not trust their intuition. And that actually accidentally can, can harm them. So it's, it's a case of, yeah, you know, not doing too well this morning. It's not my best morning, but it'll, it'll be all right. I'll feel better in a little while. I'm going to do this about it. I'm going to have a bath. I'm going to whatever. So that you're modeling to her that, yeah, you know what? Sometimes life really sucks, but there are always things that we can do to make it just that little bit better. And that that's what's going to make a difference in the long run. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. And you this, know, yeah. Sorry. So no, no, go, sorry. Go, continue. I, I was just I was just going to say again that this is a very difficult situation because you're ill and you have a child. It's it's painful, absolutely painful for you to, to be in this situation. Um, but life can be painful. And as much as we want to protect them from absolutely everything in the world, we can't, nor should we completely, because we want them to have tools to use with, for when they are the ones who are having to face difficult situations. Yes. What were you um, going to say? No, well, it's quite different. I don't have children, so I can't, you know, obviously speak in that way, but I can only imagine how difficult that must be. Um, but like you said, Anna, this, you know, with every challenge, there's something in this that we can hopefully turn into something. It's obviously something I knew as well that I needed to learn. I could not, I put on the brave face all the time with my family. And ironically, in a very different way, I ended up back living with my mother. And I would have always felt a sense of responsibility all my life for making her feel okay emotionally. So it was sort of, even though it's very different, it's a mother, but it was the daughter with the mother. And I did spend a lot of time at the beginning when I was exhausted and couldn't get out of bed saying, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And trying to act like everything was perfect. And then I would crawl back up the stairs when she wasn't around. It's still I'm now it's 2016 since I had cancer and it's still a work in progress. But I've learned it, it's definitely shifted huge the relationship where I had to it I got to a point I just literally could not get out of bed and I felt so unwell that I started saying it and I said look I'm fine this is just part of what I need to go through you don't need you know and I I don't feel well but it's okay I just need to tell you and I had to start 
really challenging because I sort of was learning. I cannot be now. I know it's very different for the child and she's very young, but I still I think it, it applies to all our relationships. I'm sure if you look at adult relationships that you have, I had no boundaries and I found it very difficult to say, no, I can't do this right now. But look, I'll be OK, but this is really difficult because if you probably it sounds like been the person that people have come to, I imagine, have you? Either. Yeah. And suddenly no. your sense of self is built on that. That's what I found very difficult. I'll be left with nothing. I'll be abandoned. You know, it's a huge, a huge wound, a huge wound. And I found it particularly with my mother. So it's you're learning it, I know, in a very different way, in a challenging way with the child, you know, but you're teaching her something amazing at the same time and doing in her, as Anna said, in seeing this, it's. Uh, yeah. Mel. Do you sense that sometimes she wants to do things for you or rescue in any way? Very okay. much so. She's so yeah. like that. She's that, so sort of heartfelt. Okay. So there's two things that are happening there. Number one, she's obviously very anxious. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you, you, you want to allow her to do some things for you. Not everything, obviously. But just little things, allow her to do those little things. This is about you learning to receive as well. But you need to remember that if you don't allow her to do something for you, what you're doing is you're disempowering her accidentally because she wants to, to feel like there's something she can do for you. She's in a situation at, at nine years of age where she's having to witness probably the person she loves most in the entire world suffering. And that is so painful for anyone, but she's only a little girl. And she wants to feel like there's something that she can do to make a difference. So you're gonna have to, I think you need to decide what it is that you can do. So it might be that, you know, you're feeling really lousy and, you know, she, she just wants to cuddle up with you. And you could say, oh, do you know what? That's just the best thing in the world. I couldn't have asked for anything better to make me feel just a little bit better at this moment in time. Because she can't take the cancer away, which is what she wants to do. And that is the thing is that we always want to fix the person that we love because we want to stop them suffering and we can't. It's there are things that are not within our gift to do, but there are things that are within her power to do, and you need to allow her to do those things so that she can feel like, yes, at least I'm doing something for mommy. I'm not completely powerless. Right. Right. So now this is especially important because I've been looking at your chart as I've been listening to you and um, to Celine. And you know, you're a Capricorn, and as Celine um, rightly guessed, everybody comes to you. You're the rock, you're the one who's the responsible one. And you have the moon in Scorpio, which is all about very powerful feelings. But between them, there's not a lot of expression. You know, it's it's being the strong one is the is the thing, isn't it? One thing I would say though, that Scorpio is also about regeneration. So I feel here that you are able to regenerate and regenerate well. So it's attending to yourself, learning to attend to yourself. And it's really important. You were talking about growing up in a rather strict religious um, environment. Um, well, the part of the chart which is linked with, if I can put it as karmic lessons, life's purpose, we could describe it any number of ways, is in the sign of Sagittarius, which is all about religion. Right. But it goes beyond religion because it's about meaning. Religion has a purpose and at its best, it is the means by which we have a sense of meaning in life. But when it 
It is about rules that have become divorced from meaning. It's lost its soul. And so I feel here that there's something about reconnecting with your spiritual self or finding the spirituality that goes beyond the rules. You know, Capricorn is brilliant at following rules. Nothing mm -hmm. better than Capricorn at following rules. And, and they're written in stone. So I think as a little girl, you probably took everything very literally and very much to heart. And it's time to rewrite the rules, or I would put it a different way. It's time to imbue them with, with soul, with right. meaning. Because I think that as you do that, you will be energizing yourself hugely because there will be a purpose. There will be a purpose to every experience you've ever had. There will be a purpose to continuing. There will, that's beyond just doing it because you have to, because you have a little girl, etc. cetera. It's, it's about honoring your existence in itself. And you don't just have that North Node in Sagittarius, you have Neptune, you have Mars there too. And you have them in the house, the eighth house which is links up with your moon in Scorpio. It's about regeneration. It's about facing life and death matters. And in your case, it's literally so. And looking beyond survival, looking at actually connecting with something that's very deep within you, I feel, um, as well. And I'll just add something else that goes with this. You have the sun in the ninth house. The ninth house is the house of questing, looking for meaning also. So there's, there's more than one indicator for this in the chart. And then you have Jupiter in Pisces in the 12th house. And you have Chiron in the 12th house as well. Jupiter in the 12th is like, having a guardian angel encoded into your chart. So it, it's like when things really are at their worst, there's this little light that comes through and says, here, take this, take this road. Have you felt that? Yes, for sure, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's out of nowhere, this yeah. little light appears. And at first it's just this tiny little light and you go, Oh, what is that? And then you feel like you have to follow the light and the light gets brighter and brighter. So, and it's in Pisces. And I think you've got this instinctive ability to connect with something beyond what is visible. So I would recommend that you really seek out energy healing. And because I think that combined with, did you say you're a psychotherapist? Mm, yes. So you will be familiar with hypnotic techniques. Yes. Use them, use okay. them, use them, use them. Combine that with the energy healing. In fact, if you, if you like, I can show you how to do that. I do it with clients a lot. It's extraordinary because what you're doing is you're using hypnosis to get into a trance-like state. and if you are so inclined, you can at that point connect with, God, with um, guardian angels, guides, relatives, yeah. whoever it is that's there to, that you need at that moment in time, you can make that connection and really have some very deep um, healing experiences. Wow. And the other thing I'm going to recommend is that is sound healing. Mm. music because Pisces is so responsive to that and you have a Taurus ascendant I would say you need to sing <laughs> <laughs> and there is no such thing as a bad voice mm -hmm. you need to sing in fact only today I've, I've recorded um, an amazing um, session uh, version of, the, of this um, in, an interview for in the light which is going out 
just before this, but I'm going to send you the link as soon as it goes out because it's all about the power of sound for healing. Amazing. And specifically, I focused on the voice. We focused on the voice. And you need to know that there have been studies that have shown that cancer patients who joined choirs heal more quickly and more deeply than others who haven't wow. in the study that was done. That's wow. the power of it. So singing is really valuable and you don't have to join a choir, but you can, you can practice it just by singing yourself That's and right. working on feeling that resonance going through your body. And as soon as that interview is out, I will send it to you because I'd like to, to see you use it because I could see this would be hugely beneficial. Mm. One final thing, Jupiter is in Pisces at the moment, um, but it's going back into Aries through the first half of next year. It mm. travels right through into the spring, right through your 12th house into your to your ascendant i think next year could be a very healing year for you so i want to give you that as a as a real um ray of hope because i i feel it could be very very healing for you because that 12th house is about healing at the subconscious level which is what you need mm -hmm. and at a at a at a spiritual level which is what you need like a replenishing of the cup and then as it goes through and crosses your ascendant into your first house. The first house is the house of the body. So it's our, it's the physical body itself. So I feel that as it's transiting through that house, it's a real opportunity to heal at an emotional, subconscious, spiritual, and then you're going to see the physical responding um, as well. So that there's a lot of, of hope there for you. Wow. Wow, thank you so much, Anna. That's just given me a just wow. feeling. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you know, that's the, 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 the energy healing and the music healing and all of these things are things you can do with your little girl. Do you know, she's, she's got a voice of an angel. She's an amazing singer. Even today, I, I took her to a singing lesson and her teacher was saying, well, she, her voice is just beautiful. So that's interesting you say that. You can do some singing together. You can uh, do some sound workshops with singing bowls, you know, anything. Because then you're showing her that when we get sick, we can heal. Mm. Mm. And, and now you're, you're really, you're, how can I put it? You're, you're really changing her experience. Because as you grow in hope and as you grow in strength, you're showing her that there's always things that we can do, that there's always hope and that there's always things that we can do that are empowering. So things that you do together. Um, so, yeah, you can help. You can encourage her to be involved in doing these things that are you that, you know, are going to be beneficial to you. But you're also teaching her something very valuable which will be very different from the experience you had growing up. This is, you're teaching her about nourishing her body, nourishing her soul. And, and I think that will be very positive for her. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for that, Anna. What a beautiful message. Thank you. Brilliant. Wonderful. Um, I guess at this point, um, if anybody has anything they'd like to offer um, as as helpful and suggestions i know that there's other healers in in the room as well um and or if you've got any questions this is a good time to to ask them um um i i have a set of tuning forks um sound therapy tuning forks so i could always offer a session if you feel you would benefit from the the tuning fork sound therapy it's really beautiful just to sit there and and each tuning fork um, resonates at a certain frequency for your body so if there's any disease there it reminds your body innately of how that organ or part of the body should the frequency it should be resonating on so it, it helps re-educate your body in that way and move it forward well if um if you're interested mel i can always put you in touch with Haley. Oh, um, thank you, Hayley. That's really lovely of you. Thank you. Yes, please. 
And just to mention Mel as well, just I, I hadn't said it, but a, a big part of my healing was energy healing work, you know, yeah. because everything starts energetically and and also I had trained with the sound healer so I used the Tibetan bowls you know the the frequency and I had a healer who worked with me on you know the different frequencies as well throughout the body so it's played a huge role even in bringing me back into that sense of self and into that um stillness and quiet where I could sort of start to hear and as Anna said sort of find that sort of sense of maybe mm. her creativity can play that was a huge part for me but I you know in, in allowing coming into those sort of healing energies then that's when I started to notice that creative that joy that passion you know, something little spark of something starts to take hold um and I'd also like to offer that if at some point in the future you'd like, I do distance sessions with people. So I'd be very happy to offer as a combination of Reiki and then using the Tibetan bowls as well. But it's beautiful healing frequencies. So I'd mm -hmm. to offer you that too. Thank you. So it's, Thank it's, you. it's there, isn't it? In fact, yeah. there is a question I, I wanted to ask you as well. Um, and, and that is, where is your relationship with your parents at this point in time? <laughs> Well, they're they're very uh, they're, they're very helpful in terms of you know assisting with my little girl. Unfortunately, her her father died a couple of years ago, which obviously also is an added complexity in terms of how I feel about being unwell. I have to show sort of strength in that sense, you know, because of you know that what she went through. Well, you know, uh, for my parents, they lost my sister three years ago to cancer. So there's also that complexity too. So I get pulled into the you know, my mother's sort of sense of what's going to happen to this daughter and all that sort of. Um, so you're you're being affected by her fear as well. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. OK. Um, I think it's really important then that. It's it's unfortunate because you're in the role of having to reassure your mother, which is it's like it's being trapped in that role where you're the the dependable one um and i'm i'm wanting to reconcile the need for you to break free from that and also the need to look after her yes so um i guess the best thing i can suggest is decide what you are comfortable with asking of her okay. that is not going to lead to her feeling worse, but also allows you to feel supported. So obviously the childcare is, is one of those things that is, is huge. And if that's all you feel that you can share with her at this moment is I have to go to an appointment. Can you please look after? Then that's great. But it could be that you you might need somebody to actually, you know, cook dinner um, yes. for her or something. Do you have a oh, freezer? She's very good at that. She's very good. Yeah, at food. I, exactly. food is a thing that's you know exactly. they're very good at. So. So do you have a Do you have a freezer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you could do to your mum instead of her having to be present when you're feeling at your worst, you could say to her, you know, mum what would be really helpful is if you can batch cook some things for me that I could put in the freezer for those days when I'm really low on energy and I really can't face cooking and and that way she feels like she's contributing mm -hmm. and she is actually giving you some really valuable help but she doesn't have to witness when you're at your worst because if she has unresolved grief from the loss of another daughter then this is a huge thing for her that yeah. that and, and for your father of course I'm, yes. I'm, I'm yes. speaking about her because you know we were talking about you mentioned her but I feel actually with both your parents they're both extremely sensitive but very um but not very demonstrative they tend to not they tend to be i think more practical your mom yes. I, I think is the 
No, I think it's both. Every time I look at your chart, I think it's one, I think it's the other, but no, it comes down to both. I think they're both like this, where they really sit on their feelings and you can feel them, but they don't talk. And that's what I was wanting to avoid you doing with your little girl. Sure. Um, so, so I think it comes back to give her something to do that doesn't mean that she feels powerless. Sure. Give your father something to do that doesn't leave him feeling powerless. But at the same time, protect yourself from their fear mm. by not exposing them to the times when you're at your lowest there right. must be somebody else for the emotional support that you need when you're at your lowest they can't do that no. so <laughs> that would be the the balance that i would suggest and other ideas will come to you this is just me talking in the moment but you know them and you know your situation better than anyone so you just give them little jobs to do that will help them feel like they're contributing to your, excuse me, well-being. And at the same, and then shield them from when you really need emotional support. If there's somebody else who can give that to you, that would be great. With your little girl, there's the added complication that she's already lost her father. Yeah. So it's so important that she is able to feel like she's, also offering you something that she's not powerless um, at the same time again. May I say, may I? Yes. I, I mean, amazing, Melanie, you sound amazing, firstly, but uh, the, the thing that strikes me listening to you is, is this, we've chatted quite a lot about you protecting your daughter, your mum, your father, and not much talk about who's doing that for you and, and how are you looking after that, that for yourself? That there has to be All I was hearing was you, you've lost an ex-partner or partner at the time, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. You've lost your sister. You know, these things have happened to you as well, not just to your mum and your dad and, and to your daughter. So I'm all I'm feeling right now is, mm. gosh, who's how's Melanie mm. looking after herself? Who's looking after Melanie? So I just wanted to check exactly. how you... And that's where, where, where I was talking about therapy that you could actually bring to help you and to support you. But... And I, and I was saying, you need that emotional support. You can't get it from them. So, and, and Caroline's quite right. Where are you getting it from? Is there somebody there? Can I just also suggest to you, Melanie, um, to do some meditation. Uh, if you're not familiar with Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, have a look on YouTube and, and watch some of Joe's. I'm a great advocate for Joe's work. Yeah, um, I've recently and, started to look at his <clears> stuff. So thank yeah. you. And, and the main thing is to remember we are frequencies, we're all energy. And when you when you have an emotion, emotion, if you're holding an emotion, it's something in the past. So you need to come and make and center yourself into the present moment because then that that emotion can't exist because it's it's always something from the past. So if we would and an example of that is if you look at my hand, you can see my hand. And if I was to put a microscope on my hand and then look at it, it looks like a mountain. And if we turn it up, eventually it becomes 99.999% space. So in actual fact, what we are as we look at each other now, we're 1% matter. And we've got the other 99% to play around with and be creative and, and do whatever we want and, and free ourselves. So when you do the meditation, I love one of the ones that, that's called changing boxes. And you imagine yourself jumping from how you are now into the future box without having to think about the story of how you're going to get there, because that's what always holds us back. We make excuses. I haven't got enough time. It won't happen to me. I haven't got enough money. But if we mm. clear those, that energy and step into the now where we're a blank canvas and step out of the, in the mind, then it changes. So yeah. Thank you, Beth. Beautiful You're welcome. Said, said, yeah. Thank you. You're and welcome. who is there? Uh, is there somebody there also who's able to help you when you're in those very dark moments? I have friends around who are very supportive and sort of, you know, um, yeah, they're the people I I, I normally sort of uh, uh, talk to. But yeah, to be honest, I'm my own worst enemy, but that I it's almost like I, because I, I 
I've closed up to free expression of I actually am feeling pretty crappy today or I'm not feeling great. It's there almost is, like something holds back, holds me back yeah. from saying that. There does need yeah. to be someone that you can say that to, I yeah. think. Yeah. And that goes right back to what Celine was saying at the beginning about the importance of having that support network. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's um, really important um, that you you have that and that you're able to learn to say, because as Celine said, this is also about learning to receive. Yes. And yeah. That you, it's almost as though, I feel what I, what to say is, you need to acknowledge your humanity, which mm. means acknowledging your vulnerability. Mm. And that by acknowledging your vulnerability and connecting with others, you are going to be nurtured. And that's going to give you the healing that you need at this moment in time. And you know yeah. what, Mel, as well, it might, for me, it came from very unexpected sources. I don't know if you found that, but they were often because like you, there were people who were, I felt I can't, you know, I know I'm feeling awful. I can't, you know, they knew me a certain way. You know, often the people that know us so well, it's very hard then because we feel there's an expectation there. So I found, and even just setting the intention, I used to ask, just please, you know, show me the support that I need. And there was one particular person, I really only knew them professionally, and they ended up becoming this rock. And because I didn't have that too close support personal relationship, I could start to, you know, be a little bit different with them. It nearly became easier to even say practice sounds an awful thing to say, but they were sort of sent to me, you know. So I think even by just sent, setting that intention, you know, in, you know, it, it, it will be shown to, you know, that those people will turn up because it is hard when you're in that, you know, feeling awful to suddenly go. Now, I've one other thing I just wanted to ask you as well is um, because it came up a lot for me for people are checking in a lot. Do you have a lot of people checking in with you and are you doing OK and texting you? And, you know, do you feel this sort of sense of pressure to respond a lot to people? I did in the mm. past, you know, when it first okay. came, came about, but uh, not so much now. So it's uh, yeah. OK. Uh, yeah. yeah, but I'm I'm seen as the person that just you know oh Mel Mel's doing really well, isn't she? Look at her, she's doing this, she's doing that. You know, so that's that's the kind of you know. Um, otherwise, yeah. I feel I'm just stuck in my own head. So I do put I do have a lot going on because I don't. It, it's otherwise you get dark moments, and it's. I nice. think it's it would be good if you were able to just send a little message to a friend when you're feeling really low just a little message that says could use a friend right now right mm -hmm. you know and then you decide what you need in that moment do you need to talk about it or do you need somebody to talk to you about anything but you know what is it you what is it you need do you need somebody to just sit with um and have a cup of tea and cry or do you need somebody to distract you and that's what you need to decide. And then when that friend says, um, what's up? You can say, don't want to talk about it, but here's what I would like to do. Right. right. You know, feeling too lousy to talk about it right now, but could we do this? So that you're, you're saying, this is what I need. And I think that's part mm -hmm. of it because it's, a, it's about learning to say what you need. I need to train myself to do that Anna thank you yeah it, it, it's, it's a process <laughs> don't be hard on yourself yeah. it's it's you yeah. don't so Beth was talking about meditation and of course meditation mm. is really important and these are the things that we we need to do in terms of self-care yeah but I think part of self-care also is learning that we we don't have to be alone and that we can state what we need and so, so this is a, so I guess what we're doing is we've got this box that we're piling different tools into for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that you can go away and think, right, okay, which, which one for this moment? Which one for this moment? So we, you've got the, the energy healing, you've got sound healing, that's for the overall 
and for opening up in in the big picture sense but then we need to we need the practical everyday stuff which could be that your parents actually are are good for, for that as well um but then we have the emotional stuff that they're not so good at in fact that they struggle with completely and and that's where you then need your friends to step in so if you if you think in those terms and then there's there's you um and when you feel like you need you want to be on your own what can you do and i think that's where meditation comes in because if you get into that habit then you're able to almost self-soothe if i can put it that way yeah yeah has journaling or writing or anything ever played a, a part for you, Mel, or just as a way of sort of expressing yourself or have you been drawn to that at all? When my sister passed away, I did, okay. I, I, I journaled a lot, uh, not okay. so much recently, but it has been playing on my mind, actually something I, I should get back into because I have mm -hmm. a lot of thoughts and a lot, a lot of almost yeah. a dialogue with myself. And I think, you know yeah. what, it'd be really lovely to just yeah. write. I found yeah. that and I, I found the artist's way book. I don't know if you've ever come across it by Julie Cameron. I okay. did that course. So it's a beautiful um, and it takes you through it step by step, you know, like they called it the morning pages. So okay. it's sort of you get beyond the conscious, as you said, the sort of things to do. And, uh, and it's sort of then you it suddenly over time can start to reveal. I found anyways, it was very helpful for me, you know, what was really going on. And it was very safe because you're just on the page there. Right. Um, but it was a really nice practice um, and nature just as another thing again I don't know if you feel the energy to get out in nature much but I, I found that do you well that's yeah because I found that like a reset if, yeah it's really if you can get to the sea if you can get to mm -hmm. water My I favorite place looking at, yeah oh, looking good. at your chart you will be energized and healed in in water so yeah. if you can be by the sea and I mean, at this time of year, no one's inclined, not many people are inclined to strip off and get in the sea, but I go in with my wellies and just stand in the sea with my mm. wellies. Um, and it's, at least I feel like I'm in contact with it. Um, so, you know, anything, you, you think of different ways, but I feel water as a healing energy is really important for you, particularly with you know, we've got strong 12th house and um, a moon in Scorpio. So that would be a, a, another wonderful thing for you. Maybe well, even like a flotation tank as well, where you can just block everything out and reset set yourself. That might help as well, even. Yeah. Perfect. And failing that always the bath. <laughs> yeah. yes, love that too <laughs> yeah. Foot bath. <laughs> yeah, just, I had no bath so I was doing that and you're doing your foot bath yeah, yeah. some Learning salt too. in it and just connect let just if you can't get out to water anywhere bring water to you just fill something with water and immerse something in water <laughs> it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. if you fabulous. do that that would be really good so, well, I, I, I feel so honored to have had all of you here today and to, to be able to um, have seen the way you generously offer your, your support. Thank you all so much. And, and Mel, thank you for volunteering to work with us today. I feel very humble. Thank you, everybody. And Celine, as always, thank you. I am sure that we will work together yet again. Oh, yes. I so enjoyed that. And I wish you well, Mel. You're just, I can see the light shining from you. And like Anna said, that regeneration, it's, it's beautiful. I can see that in you. So I really wish you well. And do reach out through Anna if there's any other way I can, can yes, help you. Or just to chat, I'd be very happy because sometimes, as good as our friends are, um, Sometimes, you know, and I've had a lot of people reach out and I reach out to people when they're going through something similar, you know, you don't have to explain. So if you just need to have a, a chat, I'm here anytime. Thank you. Thank you very much, Celine and Mel. Thank you once again. Our love and our healing energy and prayers are certainly with you. 
And uh, I know that people watching this will be joining in and sending their love and, and healing also. And on that note, thank you all for watching. And next time, we're going to be looking at other ways of healing. Until then, goodbye.